primeiro lugar, quero agradecer a Cari, especialmente a Embaixada da Saúde, a Embaixada do Sul, brilhando vice-presidente de Cari e todos os meus amigos aqui. Quero também para falar do futuro das relações ASEAN-Mercosul, do futuro das ASEAN-Mercosul. Mas agora, para nós, o presidente de MAC, Mercosul ASEAN Chamber of Commerce, se pode ver também, Rodolfo Kramer. Sim, obrigado. E é muito importante para nós, obrigado. Y realmente quiero solo hablar tres cosas, tres cosas, about the trade relation between Mercosur and ASEAN, and investment, and then the best practices among the three. But before, I would like to mention what is Mercosur and what is ASEAN. Mercosur, with its members of Brazil, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Venezuela, represents the fifth largest economy in the world with the 3.3 trillion dollars is number five of the economy in the world and with the population is uh, some mentioned 270 million people or 265 million people it's a big market also and ASEAN with uh, 10 members with uh, Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Even though the population is about six, more than 650 million people, but we are number six in the world of economy. So I'm talking about the future relations between number five and number six of economy, <laughs> really. And uh, to mention uh, some of the, why is it important? And first of all, I would like to mention that in Indonesia, Argentina now is a very nice, very interesting uh, country. I mentioned to Ambassador Sir, uh, this morning we have two members of the parliament in Indonesia. And last week we have five members. And last year we have two delegates of the parliament in Indonesia come to Argentina. Why? Not only because of the football, of course, uh, <laughs> even Mario Kempes is very famous in Indonesia, not only Lionel Messi, but uh, because they consider that Argentina from 1856 until 1913 was number seven in the world of economy, and then they consider now, with the new Argentina, there is a big confidence in Indonesia that Argentina can go back to its golden years to be the big, uh, one of the most important players in economy in the world. So they would like to come here to know what's going on really in Argentina. And uh, next um, uh, two weeks from now, a number uh, of delegates of uh, parliament also from Indonesia, uh, from Indonesia will be visiting Argentina and also Uruguay and Paraguay. Because uh, in the past we made a mistake that Latin America was too far. Even though in reality I can mention, for example, the trade relations between Indonesia and Argentina is about two billion dollars. With Vietnam I think it's about three billion dollars. <coughs> and with Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, actually it's a uh, in general, is in favor of Argentina. For example, Indonesia, 1.5 billion dollars for Argentina, only about 400 million dollars for Indonesia. But that's the old diplomacy. I told my friends here, like Sebastian uh, from Kansigiria, we are told that if it is possible, the trade relations to be balanced. But I said that that's the old diplomacy. The modern diplomacy is not necessarily the balance. For example, now Indonesia is seeking meat from Argentina. If we are able to buy some carne the Argentina, por supuesto, I think uh, more the trade relations is in favor of Argentina. But why Indonesia is seeking more meat from other countries? Because with 250 million population of Indonesia, and if you want to talk about ASEAN, 650 million people, Australia, New Zealand, 
are not able to provide the, the meat. So, for example, Ambassador Khalid from Malaysia mentioned that Indonesia is the biggest uh, Muslim population in the world. We have one month Ramadan, Ajuno. And interestingly, during the Ajuno realmente no comer durante almuerzo. Pero necesitamos or comemos más carne durante es mes. Muy interesante. So we need more beef and it's not enough from Australia and New Zealand. That's why we are looking uh, from another country and uh, Argentina is one of the uh, possibilities, of course, uh, Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay. And uh, that's uh, one of the aspects. Uh, so far, the trade relation between ASEAN and Mercosur is $1.5 trillion. I don't know how much is that in peso. <laughs> See, but, uh, and the imports of uh, Mercosur for ASEAN is $1.4 trillion. It's quite important, really. And uh, of course, if we can strengthen our relations, be it in Mercosur and in ASEAN, the distance, they consider that we are still far away. For example, my colleagues, when they saw Ambassador, my picture in Iguazu Cataratas, and I told them it's in the, the biggest uh, cataratas in the world. They say that we've been to Niagara Falls many times, and we thought that's the biggest in the world. So I said that you have to go to Misiones, to Argentina, to see the biggest uh, cataratas, and then they would like to come here. But the problem is when they knew, it's about 30 hours. <laughs> said, wow, it's 30 hours. Can we shorten? <laughs> that's the challenge for us, but uh, I hope that with the internet, it can be solved. That's one of the idea. The other one, with Mercosur and uh, ASEAN, we have some uh, similarities. For example, when I visited uh, Misiones, Intendente de Misiones said that we have seven maravilloso naturales del mundo. You have it in Brazil with the Amazon and uh, Iguazu Cataratas. And in Indonesia, we have Komodo, Komodo Islam. And then in the Philippines, and uh, we have also in Vietnam, Halong Bay. And the intendente said that why don't we connect the seven new uh, natural maravilloso? For example, if they visited uh, Bali or Komodo Island, why don't you ask the people, have you been to Kat uh, Iguazu Cataratas? So if the seven can be visited, as Ambassador Khalid mentioned, it will increase the number of tourists. Just to mention, tourists from Argentina to Indonesia is only 8,000 people. Out of 40 million people, only 8,000, and most of them go to Bali. Why is that? And then that is why I like uh, Mercosur here, also at MEC, and also from uh, Emirates here. And they have a special program to visit Indonesia, like uh, last year, I think you supported uh, people to go to Bali, that's uh, another idea. Air New Zealand also is flying now from Oakland to Buenos Aires. That's another uh, way to increase our uh, economic relations. I think WTO, World Tourism Organization, said that only from one tourist, you can have the state revenue about $1,200. So when Ambassador Khalid mentioned 28 million people, and to Thailand, I think 34 million, and to Indonesia. Indonesia, our uh, objective is 20 million in 2019. And hopefully, uh, you can visit uh, Indonesia more, especially from Argentina. And just to make an example, Universidad de Republica de Uruguay, 700 students always visit Bali every year. <laughs> Only from Montevideo. And I said to my friends here from Uber, why don't you follow Universidad de Republica, 700 students, and I think more people here who can uh, achieve to go to, to Bali. That's uh, one of the examples. But the second one I would like to talk about the insertion, the investment. The investment between Mercosur and ASEAN is still very small. For example, from Argentina, only one company 
invest in Indonesia, which is Tenaris, with the cooperation of Bolsa, the considerations of Belgium also. But why don't we have uh, more? I'm lucky. I'm happy that one of the biggest company in Indonesia in the food now is looking for La Tierra and Argentina. Si puede, trescientos mil hectares. Es grande. Uh, we don't know for what uh, investment yet, but they are very serious. The biggest company in Indonesia, because they consider if they can have it now, I think their position will be better after 10 or 20 years. So I think in investment also there is an opportunity between Mercosur and ASEAN. And the last point I would like to say, and before I forget, I would like to endorse the my colleagues who have already mentioned about uh, ASEAN, and also I saw some friends here, like Ezekiel uh, from uh, La Plata, ambassador of Pakistan here. Actually, what's the meaning of 50 years of ASEAN? Ten countries, as my colleagues mentioned, my good friend uh, Khalid here, we are like uh, brothers and sisters, but before we started, even with Malaysia, we had differences, and we didn't know. Like now, you can talk the most sensitive issues among ASEAN, but in the beginning, I think Ambassador also knew, we confine ourselves only to economic and social issues. We cannot talk about politics. <coughs> That's the beginning of ASEAN. But now, we can talk about politics, we can talk about terrorism, the most sensitive issues like borders, etc. We can talk among ASEAN. We even have a, an expression, do it in ASEAN way, ASEAN way. I still remember because I work uh, for the United Nations, the United States and European Union always say to me, Johnny, what's the meaning of ASEAN way, but you still have Myanmar. But What's going on now in Myanmar? Myanmar also is uh, a peaceful uh, country, and even the United States also have a good relations with that. And this morning, when Ambassador Chu from Vietnam came to see me, in the past we still remember when, as Ambassador mentioned, only five countries started ASEAN, solo cinco países. And we had the terminology CLMP. Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. What does it mean? It means how can they achieve the level of other, other nations, the five. But look what's going on now. I told Ambassador Chung from Vietnam, if you go to care for now, you can see many products of Vietnam. And uh, the economy of Vietnam is one of the most successful ones in Southeast Asia. So, we have to thank the founding fathers of ASEAN. They had the vision. They couldn't enjoy what they have they had in mind. But like us now, we can talk anything. I consider myself as a citizen of ASEAN. When I wrote articles, I told the ambassador before in the uh, newspapers when I was younger, I always put my name, Johnny Sinanga, as citizen of ASEAN. So. <laughs> Now, after 50 years, I think we have uh, a debt to appreciate our <coughs> founding fathers. And the same thing with Mercosur, I think we have a great opportunity to develop. But I don't want to frighten all of us here. One general of Indonesia, his name is Gatot Normandio. He's the CNC, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. He said that in a very interesting story. What is the root cause of the conflicts or war in the world now? He said that it's because too many people. Now the population of the, uh, the world is 7.5 billion people. That's according to the United Nations. And 20 <coughs> years from now, it will be 8.5 billion people. It's a lot. And what does it mean? According to the expert, actually the world can only have 3 billion people. It means, what does it mean? We need more food, we need more energy, and we need more water. That's according to the general. That's the root causes of conflicts all over the world, according to him. Be it in Afghanistan,
be it in Syria, be it in Iraq, etc. But they made a lot of reasons to justify, of course. They can use religion, they can use politics, etc. That is why I'm so glad this afternoon, if it's possible, especially for the young people, I'm glad to hear, to see here many young people, especially from Argentina. What can we do? Because uh, the general made an illustration. Can you imagine if only 10 million people from China entered Malaysia? And they said, initially they are polite, please give us food because we couldn't eat for two days. But after one week, they couldn't eat anything. I think when we are trying to eat something, they might grasp the food from our plate. And it's, it can happen. Like in Argentina also, we cannot close the border from Paraguay, from Uruguay, etc. But the point is, we need to be more creative because we need more food, more energy, more uh, water or agua. One of the way is to understand each other. So from Mercosur, for example, with 270 million people, we need to talk uh, to cooperate more with ASEAN with uh, 650 million people. There are many opportunities. And as I said before, if Indonesia buy a lot of uh, soha from Argentina, it does not mean that the, the company, the businessman of Indonesia, does not make a profit. Of course, the businessman makes profit when they import uh, soybean from Argentina. So it's not a loss. That's why I say that modern diplomacy is not just to balance the trade relations. But of course, Indonesia had uh, in favor with other countries like with the uh, United States, Europe, and Japan. Indonesia is in favor. But with Argentina, Argentina is in favor. So the modern diplomacy, I say that we are not responsible only to our own constituents, our government and people, but also to the receiving country. So if I cannot give the right information to Argentinian people, it's also my failure. It's not only to convince my government and my people, but also to the people of Argentina. So with this, I would like to say thank you so very much, and let's hope for the future.